campaigns. If you watched the big vice presidential debate this week, you should know that was just a warm-up act for the show we have for you tonight. I know everyone's fixated on the race for the White House, but if your vehicle has just been broken into, you've been awoken by the sound of gunfire in the middle of the night, your business has been burglarized, or you've been terrorized by crime in your neighborhood, you should know Donald Trump or Kamala Harris aren't swooping in to resolve those issues for you. This week, you're going to meet some of the most important and overlooked players in the criminal justice system that, unlike, say, the police chief, you actually get to vote on and hold accountable at the ballot box. The stakes are high in Jackson County this November, as longtime prosecutor Jean Peters Baker announces she's not running for re-election after 13 years in the job. Today I'm announcing that I will not seek another term as Jackson County prosecutor. Now, sorry, to, that makes me a little um, emotional, tearful. Well, picking a replacement for Jackson County Prosecutor Ms. Baker may not be the top item on your ballot this November, but it's one of the biggest decisions Kansas City area voters have to make. Who should it be? Well, it's definitely going to be one of those two people sitting around the table with me this week. Republican candidate Tracy Chappell is the former prosecutor for the city of Blue Springs. She uh, is a defense attorney now, representing clients in multiple county courts. Democrat Melissa Johnson formerly served as an assistant Jackson County prosecutor. She now serves in the mayor's office as the city's first director of public safety. I have to say there's a lot of headaches, first of all, Tracy for being in this job. I know that Jean Peters Baker was getting death threats on a weekly basis. Her public safety was, uh, was under threat. Her family safety was under threat. Why do you need the aggravation of being in this job? Well, Nick, thank you so much for that question. I actually saw the direction that the current administration was going when it comes to prosecution, and it was not a direction that left us safe in our communities. As a matter of fact, it left people downright fearful because of the level of property crime that we're experiencing and the level of violent crime that we're experiencing. When I was a head prosecutor for the city of Blue Springs, I continuously saw felonies come across my desk, and they were not, because they were not being prosecuted at the state level, and they absolutely should have been. But they landed on my desk because the current administ administration yellow sheeted them, meaning they failed and refused to prosecute those cases. And so with my level of experience and my expertise, I said, why not let me be the person to make our communities safe again? Like it or not, we've got to witness firsthand how Jean Peters Baker has run that office. Yes. What is the biggest difference we would see if you're elected? One of the big, biggest differences that you're going to see when I am in that office is actually prosecuting drug cases. For Since 2021, Jane Peters Baker has said, I am no longer going to prosecute drug cases unless there is a, ne a violent nexus with that. That is unacceptable, Nick. When I uh, defend cases, um, mainly drug cases, um, it, and it's a Class D felony, the possession of a controlled substance, I am finding that people who are... are um, on wet or PCP, meth and heroin and fentanyl, those are highly addictive drugs. And so when these people are addicted to the drug and they can no longer supply, supply that drug, they are now committing property crimes, violent crimes, and we are seeing those things on the rise right now. And so what I really want to do is get those people help, get them in a drug court, but if they refuse that type of treatment, then they have to go sit down, and that means incarceration. Melissa Johnson, what makes you better qualified for this job of prosecutor than your opponent? It is no longer sufficient, and this is according to the Missouri Association of Prosecuting Attorneys, to simply be a figurehead in the courtroom. In me, you're going to get somebody who is going to intervene in ongoing crime with the full force of the law, but I'm also going to work proactively to prevent crime before it happens. I am the only candidate in this race with felony prosecutorial experience and public safety administrative leadership experience as well. You know, you said about no, you can't be just a figurehead in the courtroom, but you would have to Absolutely. deal with some very big cases, uh, whether it be things like uh, mass murders, potentially serial killers, uh, an officer who commits murder. What is the biggest case 
you have taken to trial as a lead prosecutor? Dwayne Toombs. Well, I was not the lead prosecutor. I was working with the lead prosecutor, but did work on the Dwayne Toombs first-degree murder case, wherein the victim actually was killed in front of his three young sons. And during that time, I was the prosecutor who my colleagues called on to get those young men, primarily young men of color, to cooperate and believe in the system. We could have not prosecuted that case without my involvement. We see the prosecutor as someone who stands behind a podium, and we see her on our local evening news pretty much almost every day of the week, it seems, these days. Uh, but yet, some people have said this is an office, this is like running a 150-person law firm. Mm -hmm. That's how big this office is, you know, have you ever managed 150 people before? Not 150 people, but I have managed before. In my current role as director of public safety, I lead a city task force that looks at commercial businesses that have had a plethora of public safety issues, representatives from every single city department, and that is over 50 individuals. And so I'm very confident in my leadership abilities as well. How about for you, Ms. Chappell? Have you ever managed 150 people before? I have never managed 150 people. However, I will tell you, when looking at my experience as the head prosecutor for the city of Blue Springs Neck, I had to train police officers. I am the only one in this room who has actually trained police officers on Fourth Amendment issues. Those are expressly the issues that we will be dealing with as the next Jackson County prosecutor. I have trained my uh, prosecuting attorneys. I have also trained staff on what to do in legal situations. I have established policies and procedures on how to operate in my office. So when I look at those things and I compare myself with the opponent, I understand that she's the director of public safety, but she is the only individual in her office. So essentially, it's the director of no one. And so when I'm looking at that and I look at my experience that's, that, I, that I currently have, I have experience that makes me readily available to walk into that job on day one. Like to respond to that? I would. You know, Ms. Tra Ms. Tracy Chapel right now is a solo practitioner. At the Blue Springs Prosecutor's Office, the staff was not massive. You have an administrative assistant and a small handful of attorneys. And when you look at the coalitions that I have led, where you're talking about the city's task force, whether you're talking about Partners for Peace, which is a violence intervention program, the new Focus Deterrence Program, Save KC, I have leadership responsibilities in all of those positions. And just because I don't have staff directly under me, I am leading, and the people that I I work with belief in my leadership capabilities. What is the single biggest action or decision you would take as prosecutor to lower violent crime in Kansas City and Jackson County? Studies show from the Department of Justice, the University of Dayton, Ohio Law Review, the Marshall Project, that lengthy prison sentence do, sentences do not actually deter crime. Swift resolution does. And so I'm going to make investments into cell phone forensic analysis to make sure that we are bringing these individuals to justice and delivering justice to families that are grieving much quicker in places like Las Vegas. And I think we talked about this during the primary, where they do those cell phone analytics within 48 hours. They have an over 91 percent clearance rate, and it happens quick. It is certain. And the more we can strengthen our cases, the more we can bring people to justice in an expedient way. The single biggest thing, decision you would make as prosecutor to reduce violent crime in Jackson County is what? Nick, we're going to have to get back back to the old school. We're going to have to start community prosecution. What that means is we're going to have sat satellite offices for our prosecutors in the police departments. We're going to do that early and often to help them with their investigations, because when police officers have good investigations, when they're able to get questions, answers from the prosecutor, swiftly and efficiently, when they can have good investigations, then we can, as prosecutors, do our job effectively and swiftly. Now, I will tell you this. When I hear about cell phone analytics, that is not a function of the Jackson County Prosecutor's Office. That is a function of the police department. And so, uh, my opponent, at some other form, has basically stated that she is going to defund the police and take... Um, um, combat funding, funding that is designated for police officers, she would take $2.1 million of their funding and put it towards cell phone analytics. That is very concerning to me because police officers need all of the funding that they can get. For too long, we have seen police officers or people talk about the long 911 calls or the wait times. They have talked about a shortage of officers. We cannot, and I repeat, Nick, we cannot afford to have someone take two 
$5.1 million from the police budget through combat to fund a, a, a program that is not even the function of the Jackson okay, County and Prosecutor. Your to that is what, Absolutely. So combat has a pie chart, and 9.5% of combat dollars, which is $30 million annually, goes to the police department. And so this technology would be purchased for the use of the police department. Kansas City Police Department is better funded than 96% of police agencies in this country. I am not trying to take anything away from them, but a prosecutor's job is to work collaboratively together with police so that we can see justice delivered in these cases quicker, and cell phone analytics is a huge piece to that puzzle. New FBI crime figures show a double-digit rise in juveniles accused of violent crimes. Last year, there was a 30 percent jump in the number of teens accused of property uh, crimes. So what's the fix? Should one of those responses be trying more juveniles in adult court where the penalties are greater? Where appropriate, absolutely. There is a code of conduct in Jackson County, and in my opinion, by giving slaps on the wrist to very violent and egregious juveniles is not only disrespectful to the victims, it is disrespectful to those young people as well, because we are selling them a dream that they can conduct themselves in this way without consequence. That is only going to fast track their journey to either a jail cell or a morgue for the rest of their life. I will not sit idly by, and I'm also interested in holding parents of repeated juvenile offenders accountable as well. How would that work? I mean, we have seen that in other parts of the country where we are now saying parents should be held responsible for the crimes of their children. You would do that too in Jackson County? Absolutely. I'm the only candidate in this race who already has a seat at the table at KCPD's weekly shoot review that happens every single Wednesday morning. I see the cases. I see incidents where parents can be proven to be complicit in the criminal conduct of their children or criminally negligent. Where where those circumstances exist, we will be evaluating endangering the welfare of a child in the first and second degree. Tracy Chapel, how would your approach be different, if at all? Let me say this. I'm the only candidate at the table who has actually prosecuted in juvenile, or, I'm sorry, who has actually defended in juvenile law. So I actually had a first seat, a first hand seat at the table dealing with juvenile defendants, dealing with their parents. And it really is um, a unique situation that um, parents and juveniles find their, themselves into. And so as the next Jackson County prosecutor, I, I'm finding that the attorney for the juvenile officer, they rarely certify juveniles as an adult on cases that I actually think that they should. I have had cases where juveniles have stolen a vehicle, and inside of that vehicle, they have had their AR-15 with them. It was locked, loaded, and ready to go. And thank God the police got behind them and thwarted that situation. But the attorney for juvenile officer decided not to certify a case like that. So as what I understand in speaking with them, before they certify a juvenile defendant, they will actually get on the phone and call the Jackson County prosecutor and ask them the question, if we move to certify this individual as an adult, will you prosecute them as an adult? And time and time again, what we're hearing is that the current administration is saying, we will not do that. But as your next Jackson County prosecutor, because I understand and I've been there, um, when the attorney for juvenile officer actually says, we want to certify them, I know that that is heinous enough where I will actually step up and do my job and I will actually sort of um, prosecute that person as an adult. With a wave of uh, car thefts and home break-ins, one of our viewers, Thomas, wrote to us. He says, whoever is willing to prosecute property crime gets my vote. Is that you or you? Definitely me. Okay. And I Tell have actionable, why. realistic strategies to get us there. If you look at the data, once a property crimes case gets in the door, they are being charged by Jackson County to the tune of 86 percent. And this is not just based on Jackson County Prosecutor's Office data, but KCPD's own 2023 annual report as well. So how do we work collaboratively to get more cases in the door is problem number one. And then problem number two, we need to expand the office's capacity to be able to handle that increase in cases. The Jackson County Prosecutor's Office is fully staffed. Community prosecution is not a feasible way forward because we can't tack on additional caseloads to an already full staff with full caseloads. So I am going to actually deploy prosecutors to the scenes of different high shoplifting areas, to homes where the cars have been stolen, to do a preliminary review of evidence, and then engage PD to actually work up the case. And I will also start a brand new property crimes prosecution division that will be staffed with attorneys 
attorneys and law students so that we can expand our capacity and actually be able to hold more people accountable. Last year, 9,063 reports for stolen auto taken by KCPD. We have we need a lot more bodies to be able to handle that influx right. of cases. Thomas, don't make your voting decision yet, because that was only Melissa Johnson's response, because we haven't heard from Tracy Chappell. I, are you going to be the person who's going to solve the property crimes? Absolutely. And I want to I want to say this. What I'm continuously hearing is when I talk about prosecution or I'm going to uh, be in the courtroom and doing these things, I am hearing uh, this is... Uh, the only when I talk about experience, I'm talking about the, my experience with the law. When I hear my opponent talk, I, t I hear her time and time again talk about programming, programming in Las Vegas, pro programming in Portland, and other places, programming, programming, programming. Frankly, Nick, we are programmed out, okay? So when we are looking at these property crimes that we are currently seeing and the rise of them, it, what happened is the prosecutor's office did not get in front of it. So we're looking at the back end of it. When I hear um, that the prosecutor's office is actually prosecuting, they're getting 1% of these property crimes and they're prosecuting 80%, 86% of that, that is... I have to agree, disagree with that wholeheartedly as the head prosecutor in the city of Blue Springs. I cannot tell you the times that I have gotten tamperings in the first degree, which is a car theft, come across my desk because the prosecutor's office failed and refused to do their job. So with that said, police officers have gotten sick and tired of taking those cases to the prosecutor's office only to be told that we're not going to prosecute those. So they're not including that in the regular numbers when they're they're doing their statistics. Uh, I can I can tell you that because I'm not talking about a program in Portland or anyone anywhere else. I am talking about as a head prosecuting attorney what I saw and that is not just in Blue Springs. That's in Kansas City. That is in Lee Summit. That is in Independence. It is in every policing municipality that is in Jackson County. You have to prosecute these cases because I can't tell you, Nick, and okay. I'm going to... Uh, yes. But Gene Peters-Baker has been going public now, yes. blasting yes. people who have this... What she says is a myth about what's happening here. Of the 1,600, she says, reported burglaries or break-in, only 81 cases were submitted to her office, she says, out of nearly 9,000 theft offenses, only 52 cases were presented to her office. So is it really her being soft on crime, not prosecuting, or something else happening there? Nick, she has always been soft on crime. She has been soft. She says she's got, she, she's not getting those cases coming to her from the police. Well, I'm get, I was getting cases, those cases coming to my office as the head prosecutor for the city of Blue Springs. And in getting those cases, I actually consulted with um, the head prosecutors in other jurisdictions in Jackson County to ask them, are you getting strangulations? That's a felony. Are you getting tamperings in the first degree? That's a felony. Yeah. So is, is it not getting, um, is it not prosecuting or that simply the prosecutor is not getting those cases brought to them by the police? This exchange is very concerning because if we aren't accurately diagnosing the problem, how can we devise real solutions? It's not just based off of Jackson County Prosecutor's Office data, but KCPD's own data as well. And I do want to clarify one point. There is a big difference between a program and an enforcement strategy. Everything that I have discussed today are prosecutorial and enforcement strategies that actually strengthen our cases, increase our clearance rates, and decrease case dismissals. And I understand that my opponent might not know the difference because her extensive prosecutorial experience was handling traffic tickets. I'm wondering, though, how are you going to achieve some of the results you talk about with these initiatives? Yes. Uh, especially when every night of the week, it seems, we can hear about someone in Kansas City who is on hold for three, four minutes or longer to get a response from 911, an acknowledgement from the city manager that, quote, we don't have jail space, so we have to release people early. So even with all of these ideas, are those for naught if we don't fix those things? Well, the city jail issue is separate and distinct from the Jackson County Detention Center issue. There's currently 876 beds at Jackson County. They've already broken ground on the new facility that will have 1,000 beds. And the the way that my strategies are designed to fix this issue is collaboration. If KCPD is tied up, which we know they are short-staffed and will be, how can my prosecutors fill in some of those gaps and work collaboratively to fix everybody's concerning statistics? Okay. Because we all have that. There has been a visible public rift between the prosecutor's office and yes. the uh, 
police department, uh, what would you do, the biggest thing you would do to improve that relationship in the next four years if you're a prosecutor? What I've been doing for the past three years, I have been working side by side with KCPD, building programmatic efforts from the ground up and not airing our grievances out for the entire public to see. When we do that, the public loses confidence in the system entirely. How would you do it? Absolutely. We talked about community prosecution. We have got to connect with the police departments. We have also have to connect with neighborhood associations because we have to start working as a joint effort. We have to do this in a joint effort. Nick, when I'm, I'm sitting here, I, I'm, you know, I, I'm hearing things that are, that are being said by my opponent. In order to really deal with the issue, you need experience. My opponent has no experience. With 1.5 years in the Jackson County Prosecutor's Office back in 2014, that is the extent of the criminal law experience that she has had. And so when you have that, there's not a lot of faith that you have that a person in that, in that who's had that skill set can walk but, in but, on day but, one. But does being director of the public safety department, the first director of public safety for the city, not count? It, listen, there's no one in there but her. She's the director of no one. And when you go into the Jackson County Prosecutor's Office, I think you said it yourself, you are looking at being managing, okay, training attorneys. When you've never trained an attorney and you yourself only have 1.5 years of experience, you still need training yourself. Okay, does that put you at a disadvantage? Absolutely not. And when we're talking about experience, we have to tell the whole story. I have a decade of public safety experience, felony prosecution, combat commissioner, clerking for a federal judge who handled criminal cases, and director of public safety. But it's important to tell the whole story because my opponent was actually fired from the Jackson County counselor's office, according to a Star article in August of 2016. And her term, her contract with Blue Springs prosecutor's office was terminated in January of 2022. And so if she's not good enough for Blue Springs, the question becomes, how can she be good enough for the entirety of Jackson County? Quick response to that, Ms. I'm Chappell. I'm going to say it, and I'm, I'm so glad she brought that up. Even with Blue Springs, I decided I did not want to be prosecutor anymore. That was at my discretion. We can, I mean, we can ask Carson Mira Ross. That is a person who appointed me. And I'm, wait a minute, I'm, I'm totally okay with that. But time and time again, when you find an individual who has 1.5 years of experience and, and who has misled Jackson County by saying, I've tried a case, I've tried a murder, I've tried an assault. This individual has not tried any cases. And when put to the test by her former opponent okay. with, has said, I, I thought Tracy was asking, what did I work on? This is not a job that's fly by night, learn on the job, or, or a, a job about programs. This is a job about going in on day one and being able to fortify that office, being able to have the experience that people will follow. And I can tell you right now, Nick, the older attorneys or the more senior attorneys, they cannot get behind somebody that actually needs training themselves. I understand you can talk all you want to about programs, but when you don't have experience with the law, when you don't have experience with training officers, and I don't mean walking okay. alongside officers in the streets or the mayor right. or the city council, but real you evidence. Have, you have yes. made your case there. You mentioned a little bit a while ago there yes. uh, about discretion yes. and certainly prosecutors and why discretion to decide which cases to take, which to drop. Current prosecutor Jean Peters Baker didn't prosecute marijuana possession cases, notified the KCPD to stop sending her office hundreds of low-level drug crimes, wouldn't prosecute abortion-related crimes, supported Kansas City's decision not to enforce new transgender restrictions passed by the Missouri legislatures. Those were her choices. If you were elected, what crimes, if any, would you choose not to prosecute? Nick, I'll tell you this, I want to take them on a case-by-case -case basis. I don't want to come in with a one-size blanket fits all, I'm not going to prosecute. And let me tell you why. That is why we are having the level of property crimes that we're having now. Because it was not uh, written in stone, um, I'm not going to prosecute these car theft cases. It just didn't happen. And when you walk into an office with a one-size fit, fits all blanket policy and saying, I'm just not going to do this, I'm not going to do that, you are telling criminals, it is okay for you to do this crime, this crime and this crime. And because we are in a crisis, we do not have the luxury of walking into that office saying what well, we will not try. Okay, Melissa Johnson, are there crimes you would say, no, we're not going to prosecute if I'm in that office? Reproductive care providers are not criminals. 
so I will not be prosecuting those cases under the current abortion ban. In addition to that, um, which I do want to make clarifying that that is a difference between my opponent and I, but in addition to that, lower-level nonviolent drug offenses. Um, in places like Lee Summit with Chief Forbes, they are doing some innovative stuff out there with their Safe, patches, pro safe Passage program, excuse me, where they are routing nonviolent, lower-level drug offenders to treatment instead of wasting judicial resources on prosecuting those cases because they can cost about $18 million annually and they do not hamper down demand or make anybody safe. And it's very difficult for an addict to restore themselves within the context of the incarceral state. Leading candidate for governor Mike Kehoe says if he's elected, he'll provide no sanctuary in Missouri for illegal immigration, will stand with Donald Trump to deport those here illegally. That might put the squeeze on you mm -hmm. uh, if you get this job. Uh, would you decline to prosecute or assist with cases involving violations of immigration law? If there is violence committed on another member of this community, yes. Aside from that, I will let my Republican opponent and her colleagues carry that water. Tracy, would you? Nick, we're going to follow the law. We don't get to decide what's legal, what's illegal. Whatever the legislature come down, comes down with, that is what we're going to do. Congratulations. You've just been elected by the voters, Jackson County prosecutor. Yes. And this first thing you do when you walk into the office as the new Jackson County prosecutor, the first big decision you make is what? Jesus, the first... <laughs> Oh, oh, that wasn't the answer. Okay. <laughs> Jesus was not the okay, answer, okay. but he is the answer. Okay. But the first thing that I do when I walk in, in into that office, the first decision that I made, made I'm going to make, and I, I've been speaking on this, I have got to create a unit for community prosecution. Prosecution is grassroots. You have to get the neighborhoods. You have to get the police departments on board because the prosecutor is the bridge between the communities and the prosecution so that we can get this job done and make every zip code in Jackson County safe again. There was a recount at the ballot box and you actually won and you're walking <laughs> into the Jackson County prosecutor's office for the first time. The first big decision you make is what? First, let me say it is interesting to hear my opponent to talk about community and racial disparities when she has repeatedly said on camera, I am social justice out, which is very, very concerning. But for me, day one, I will be resuming charging drug distribution cases across the board, whether there is a nexus to violence or not, so we can replicate the success of the Kansas City, Kansas Police Department, who has cut their homicides in half in just three years. Campaigns are all about comparing and contrasting. You have given us a huge difference yes. between you. Yes. Thank you so much for that. You've been watching the two candidates who want to be the next Jackson County prosecutor, Republican Tracy Chappell and Democrat Melissa Johnson. Now, up next, we head to Overland Park, where longtime Johnson County District Attorney Steve Howe is in a fight for his political life this contentious election year. We're heading to the Fiorella event space where we've partnered with the Johnson County Bar Association to bring you the Johnson County District Attorney Debate.